Hello everybody, my name is Abraham and welcome back to my channel. I am a fourth year nursing student at UCLA School of Nursing. I am also a transfer student and non-traditional student. And today I am doing a little bit of spring cleaning. I want to say it's spring cleaning. Um, if you can see around me, there is just mountains of stuff okay and so that got me thinking about stuff that i had bought while i was in community college that now looking back maybe wasn't such a good idea or really didn't pay out the way it was supposed to and stuff that i have hoarded that i could have just let go so one of the first things that i noticed i have a ton of are calculators so me being a stem major i had to do what is it college algebra pre-calculus calculus geometry physics statistics and doing all those classes i thought having the best calculator would make the class go a lot easier so i wasn't a really big like ti fanboy I didn't use the TI when I was in high school, so I never had a real like graphing calculator when I was coming out of out of high school and going into community college. So when I went back into community college and I started doing all the like algebra series and then working up to pre-calculus and calculus, I thought, okay, I need a fancy calculator, right? One of the TI-84s or TI Inspires. And so I ended up going online and finding an HP 50G graphing calculator for $50. And I ended up meeting with this guy up in, uh, up in Woodland Hills near like the Raytheon plant. And he comes out, so he hands me the calculator and he hands me like four stacks of manuals that this guy had printed out. Apparently he was using this calculator for like aeronautic mapping or something. So I thought, yeah, that's going to be good enough, right? It's going to be nice for me uh, going through and using it for math. Well, then I found out that in some of your science classes like bio, uh, genetics, microbiochemistry, they don't allow graphing calculators because they've said that people hide the images in the calculator or people use the programs in the calculator to, to like hide the periodic table or something. So I invested in this graphing calculator and then I found out, oh, you can't use a graphing calculator. So then I ended up buying this scientific calculator. And then after I got done with the bio series, I started doing calculus and other classes. So then I was like, well, you know what? I need a better graphing calculator. And so I got the HP Prime. And then after I got the HP Prime, somebody was selling a TI Inspire graphing calculator. And so I thought, oh, well, I might as well get that as well. And I will say, in the last three years of my like, college experience, I have not touched these calculators. Like, this one still has dust on it. Like, on the cover. And guess what? The only class, I can say that the only class that actually made a difference in which calculator I had was statistics. The only thing that made it easier was plugging in the, the statistical formulas. That was it. For algebra, pre, for calculus, for geometry, it did, the, the, the style of calculator didn't matter. As long as you were like familiar with the formula, you could do it with one of those $35 Casios. I didn't have to spend $200, $300 on calculators. So really that was like a big thing that just turned out to be <laughs> not worth it in the long run. 
another thing is I had the bad habit of buying every book that was listed on the syllabus. So I can show you here, of, I still have stacks of textbooks that I, that I haven't used in years. So I'm, I don't think this video is ever gonna get sponsored by a publishing company. Unfortunately, I might be burning some bridges later when I tried to become an educator. But unfortunately, one of those, the biggest like money drains that I had while I was in community college and even through university, because all my nursing books are on that shelf over there, was buying textbooks. If there was one thing that I could do differently was start renting from the beginning. I really do wish that I had began just renting the textbooks or even buying the used version at the cheapest price and then just getting rid of it right afterwards. There's all I always had that mentality that oh this is gonna make a great reference book. Oh I'm gonna use this book later. Oh who knows when I'm gonna need the information that's in this book. But I can tell you right now that some of these books have been on my shelf so long that the covers are just warped because of them standing up so long and them just like drifting down because of the weight that they they just sit they just sit there so one thing i could do differently is just rent the textbook you know get rid of it as soon as possible get and send it off to the next person because you don't use them again you really don't use them again i i've never used them again. And another thing for my spring cleaning, a big thing that I've found are all my old notes. So this is just one <laughs> year's worth of the old notes that I have been hanging on to for the purpose of using them later or documenting my work. I don't know what that sentimental value is to me of keeping all my work. Yeah, probably just everything that I have written. Here I have all my notes from community college. Three years worth of composition books and workbooks and three written spirals and everything. So I don't know what my sentimental value is to all my work. You know, maybe it is something where I'm proud of the work that I've done, but stockpiling all the notes has not done anything for me in the last six years of being in school. So what I'm gonna work on to clear up this pile of notes is actually scanning them into a digital like format maybe pdfs and putting them on my share drive and then just having them there for reference but since actually coming to ucla and switching over to like an all digital format i've been using OneNote, so i might be able to figure out how to scan these notes into OneNote and then just save them there if i really if i really want to hang on to them but this is a lot of space just being used up for for no reason really and I want to say one mistake one mistake that I wish I had watched out for when starting school or when going to community college is I don't know what what mailing list credit card companies can get but as soon as I started community college I started getting student targeted credit card offers 
And unfortunately for me, I bought into it. I ended up buy, like signing up for a credit card, getting that $500 introductory limit, going to the student store, buying my textbooks, using the textbooks for one semester, never selling them, paying the minimum balance on my credit cards. And before I knew it, that $500 limit on the credit card turned into a thousand dollar debt a fifteen hundred dollar debt uh and then i was like oh well i'll roll over the debt onto another credit card and so then i signed up for a second credit card rolled over the balance on that one then i saw oh my first credit card has a zero balance now maybe i'll charge my laptop onto that or something <laughs> and and by the end of that first quarter when I ended up dropping out of community college, I was already $2,500 in debt, working minimum wage, and not thinking that I was gonna continue school. And I already had my first stack of textbooks that had become worthless. So if there's one thing that I can redo is don't fall into the credit card trap, <laughs> throw these straight in the trash, rent, where possible your textbooks because you truly are going to use them but just for that quarter there you get no value in hanging on to them after that i'm going to stick with digitizing all of my notes i'm going to stick with one note i'm going to work on maybe scanning these into a pdf and then upload them onto my share drive but truly digitizing my notes is going to be a real big like space saver archiving whatever and stop investing in useless tech that I think I need for class, that I think is gonna make me successful. Truly the most basic calculator at the end of the day is what I use for MedMath, for any other programs online, because they don't want you to have graphic calculators. It has to be a scientific calculator with no memory and this and that. So truly, if you can if you can resist buying a really expensive fancy calculator, more power to you. But what is one of those like money traps that you fell into or even not money traps? What is one of those hoarding traps that you fell into while at community college that now looking back on it or maybe you can see it and prevent yourself from falling into it now after this well leave that in the comments make sure you like subscribe and i'll see you in the next video i'm gonna keep cleaning up this mess and i'll see you guys next week all right all right out <laughs>